Hello, and welcome to our series on acute stroke and perfusion imaging. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of VRAD, or Virtual Radiologic. This will be part three of our series. We will continue with case presentations, and in this particular segment, we'll be focusing on the non-ischemic pathologies. We'll start with a couple straightforward artifacts. This is a case with motion artifact. It looks pretty much like motion artifact on any CT scan. You can see these streaks across the entirety of the image and in such a way that all images in all of these series are involved. Obviously, this will pose some challenges when it comes to the interpretation. So that is motion artifact. Next, we have an example of a misregistration artifact. This is more specific to CT perfusion. You can see that the color maps have been superimposed on the anatomic images in such a way that they are offset. And obviously, this has to be given a more nuanced interpretation as well. Similar to the motion artifact, you can see that these involve every image in every set. So that is a case of misregistration artifact. We'll move on now to the clinical entities, the non-ischemic pathologies, and we'll start with this case of brain death. There is essentially no discernible anatomic pattern of perfusion present. In fact, we have uh, extensive heterogeneity, if not chaos, on all segments. Of course, this is hardly surprising, given the severity of findings on the CT scan itself. Certainly, it's nice to see this uh, before you encounter it in a real-time clinical situation, though. So that is a case of brain death. All right, next, let's look at this case of vasospasm. There's very little abnormality in the top row, the CBV and CBF, perhaps a little asymmetry in the CBV. The MTT we've come to see is not always that reliable from a sensitivity standpoint. It's the TTP that really tells the story here. There are regions of markedly increased time to peak and markedly decreased time to peak. A striking regional heterogeneity that really uh, has the appearance one would expect from vasospasm. You can see many more areas of the brain are involved than we were able to show on single screenshots. The heterogeneity is perhaps a little more appreciable on the other series as well, but it's still pretty clearly the TTP that is most dramatically involved. So that is a great case of widespread vasospasm in the setting of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, as you can see on the CTA. There has been an aneurysm coiling, and we have a ventriculostomy catheter in place. So again, a case of vasospasm. Next, let's look at this relatively large subdural hemorrhage. You can see on the CBV and the CBF, there is markedly reduced volume and flow in the region. Obviously, that's because of the presence of the hematoma, and you can see the Tmax and the MTT certainly do look abnormal in that region, although they're a little more heterogeneous and a little less easily interpreted. Let's look at the videos here. Oh, slightly higher up, there's actually a left frontal extraaxial collection of hemorrhage, and that is creating a similar phenomenon here with reductions of the CBV and CBF and questionable alterations in the Tmax and MTT. Here we have the video. It is interesting that essentially a non-perfused space-occupying lesion will look like a core infarct on the CBV, 
and the CBF. In addition, one might be tempted to call some uh, left frontal involvement as well, that extra axial collection, registering this in a similar fashion on the CBV and CBF. So that is the appearance of intracranial hemorrhage multifocal on CT perfusion. Let's look next at a glioblastoma multiform. We have two screenshot levels for this one. The lower one actually shows the soft tissue component of this tumor. And consistent with that, you actually see an increase in blood volume and CBF, blood flow, in the region of the actual soft tissue component of this tumor, most likely related to uh, hyperperfusion, typical of neoplasms. The MTT here is actually slightly increased as well, which may represent a neo, the effect of neovascularity. Slightly higher up, as you can see on the CTA, there is actually a cystic or necrotic component, as is typical with these tumors. And you can see that is showing up on the CBV and CBF in much the way you might think. Reduced perfusion. Of course, the Tmax and the MTT are questionable value here, but they do show an abnormality in the region and in the fashion that one might expect with an increase uh, in the Tmax. So here are the videos on that. Again, the CBV and CBF are increased in the solid region and decreased in the necrotic or cystic portion of the tumor. Interesting pictures, but doing very much what one might expect given the soft tissue and cystic components of that neoplasm. You can see the MTT is again slightly increased in the soft tissue component suggesting neovascularity. Our next case is an internal carotid artery aneurysm at the carotid apex on the left. On the CTA, you can easily appreciate that swirling, somewhat delayed filling of a large, well-circumscribed mass there in the region of the carotid apex. That is registering on the CBV and CBF as increased volume and flow. But on the Tmax and the MTT, we see relatively extensive asymmetry involving almost the entirety of the left hemisphere. That region of the aneurysm certainly shows a depressed Tmax, but the rest of that left hemisphere shows an increased Tmax and an increased mean transit time, consistent with ischemia, which the software analytics are uh, mapping there in the bottom right series. So here are the cine images. Again, that large aneurysm at the left carotid apex. There's actually an additional one uh, higher up in the right carotid. Note the asymmetry of the Tmax and MTT essentially involving the entire left hemisphere at one point or other and de denoting the delay in flow to the entire hemisphere resulting from that aneurysm. And again, probably a low-level chronic asymmetry that's being mapped there in the bottom right series by the analytics software. So that is an internal carotid artery aneurysm. Our last case is a post-ictal patient where the left temporal occipital region is apparently the focus of recent seizure activity. You can see even a little prominence of the vessels on the contrasted CT in that region. And that is manifesting as increased cerebral blood volume and increased cerebral blood flow. So certainly that is not the typical appearance of an infarct, although it is notably asymmetric and uh, regionally prominent. The MTT and the TTP are both depressed here. That may represent the effects of uh, regional autoregulation. 
Interestingly, on the angio, you can also see the prominent vessels on that left side in the early Venus return. Here are the cine images, again prominent vessels, increased blood volume and blood flow in the region, and then altered TTP and MTT, all of these things moving in the opposite direction one would expect for an infarct. So that is a case of a recent seizure with post-ictal perfusion changes. And that is it for part three of our series on acute stroke and perfusion imaging. Thanks very much for joining me. This is Dr. Benjamin Strong, Chief Medical Officer of VRAD, signing out. Thanks for watching.